can you um like wikipedia style or maybe like in in a musical form like i'm only a bill describe to me uh <laughs> i i still sing that to my head sometimes <laughs> i'm just a bill <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't know what the rest of the song goes, but yeah. let's let's uh, let's leave that to people's imagination. Uh, how how does this whole thing work? How does the U.S. political system work? The three branches is how do you think about the system we have now? If you mm -hmm. were to, to try to describe, if aliens showed up and asked you, like they didn't have time, so this is an elevator <laughs> thing. <laughs> elevator like, should pitch. we destroy you? Yeah. And, and be, as you plead to avoid <laughs> destruction, well, how, how would you uh, describe how this thing works? I would say we come together and we pick the people who make our laws. Then we pick the guy who executes those laws. And they together pick the people who determine whether they or the president is breaking the law at the most basic level. That's right. how I would describe it. Right? So the... So that's the people who make the laws are Congress. Mm -hmm. The executive is is charged with executing the laws as passed by Congress, the system, the branches of government. And the Supreme Court is picked by the president, confirmed by the Senate, which then decides whether you or other people are breaking the law in terms of interpretation of that law. That's basically it. Oh, and they they decide whether those laws are in they fall within the they fall within the restrictions and the want of the founders as expressed by the constitution of the united states which is a set of principles that we came together in 1787 i want to make sure i get this right <laughs> um 1787 and decided that we were going to live the rest of our lives barring a revolution and more and we've made it 200 and something years in order on under that system so there's a balance of power that's because you have multiple branches, there's a tension and a balance to it as designed by those original documents. Uh, what, which is the most dysfunctional of the branches? Which is your favorite? Like uh, in terms of talking about systems and like mm -hmm. what's the greatest of concern and what is the greatest source of benefit in, well, in your view? The presidency, well, the presidency is my favorite to study, obviously, because it is the one where there's most subject to variable change in terms of the personality involved because of so much power imbued within the executive. The Senate is actually pretty much the same. Right? That's <laughs> one of the things I love about reading about the Senate and histories of the Senate is you're like, oh yeah, there were always like assholes in the Senate who were doing their thing and and you know filibustering constantly based upon this or that. And then the pers the personalities involved with the Senate haven't mattered as much since like pre-Civil War, right? Like pre-Civil War, you had like Henry Clay and then Daniel Webster and John C. Calhoun, who even in their own way, they represented like larger constituencies and they crafted these like compromises up until the outbreak of the Civil War, et cetera. But like post since then, you don't think about like the titans within the Senate. Mm -hmm. Most of that is because a lot of the stuff that they had power over has transferred over to the executive. So I'm most interested in really in like power like where it lies. It's actually pretty, you know, throughout American history, much more used to lie with Congress. Now it's obviously just so imbued within the executive that understanding executive power is, I think, the thing I'm probably most interested in here.